Hello and welcome to Beat the Nation Sats Week 8 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been sitting some quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website, and I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions, and they're the three questions you can see on the screen in front of you now. But these are not just any old three questions. Oh no, these are the three worst answered questions from that particular quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So challenge number one, can you get each of these questions correct? And that might be easier said than done, of course, because these are difficult questions. Uh, challenge two, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered one is? And then challenge three, I wonder if you can predict what the most popular choice of wrong answer is for each of these questions. And then I wonder if you can get into the minds of the students who've chosen these popular wrong answers and explain why they've chosen them. And then finally, imagine you were sat next to somebody who was absolutely convinced that their wrong answer was in fact right. How would you convince them not only that you're right, but in a nice way that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video, you work through these three questions and my five challenges, take your time, and then when you're ready, press play again, and we'll go through them together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one. Right, let's go through them, and to add a bit of drama, we'll do it in reverse order. So I'm going to start with the least worst answered question out of these three, and it is the fractions question. Okay, write 15 out of 24 as a fraction in its simplest form. So we can write it as a fraction pretty easily. 15 out of 24. But of course, we've not finished here because we've got to put it in its simplest form. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the highest common factor of this numerator, 15, and this denominator, 24. So we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by that highest common factor. So um, often students look to see if they can halve the numerator and denominator. So if you divided it by two, you'd end up with 7.5 as the numerator and 12 as the denominator. But we've got to be careful here. We don't really want to have decimals mixed in with fractions. Keep those two things separate. It's, it's not considered good form to have a decimal involved as a fraction. So C isn't the right answer. We can rule out C straight away. Um, so can it be simplified? 15 out of 24, is there a common factor? Well, yeah, there is, there's three. We can divide 15 by three and still be left with an integer answer, and we can divide 24 by three and still be left with an integer answer. So what's 15 divided by three? Well, I think that's five. And what's 24 divided by three? Well, I think that's eight. Have a look here, yeah, five eighths is one of those. So I reckon that's the answer because I can't see any other common factors of five and eight that I can divide both of them by. Um, let's see if we've got it right. Well, yeah, we have, but look at that. Only 62% of students also got it right. The most common wrong answer was B, three eighths. Now, why might a student go for B, three eighths? Um, look, it's a really good start. This is a real life student explanation. You have to divide by three, but then they seem to have made a slip. They've done 15 divided by three and they've ended up with three. Perhaps when you look at that, you think, well, three over eight, that's the smallest fraction there. So maybe that's the right answer, but you've got to be careful. We divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same amount, and we've got to be super careful we get the right answer when we write down um, the answer to each of those divisions. Okay, let's take a look at the second uh, worst answered question, and it is this one here. What is the lowest common multiple of four and eight? Uh, we've got to be careful here. We don't muddle up factors and multiples. Um, I like to think of multiples as the times tables of those numbers. So if I start with four, then all the multiples of four are the four times table. So I have four, I have eight, I have 12, I have 16, I have 20, and so on and so on and so on. Um, and likewise, the at multiples of eight are your eight times tables. You have eight, you have 16, we have 24, we have 32, we have 40, blah, 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 blah. So the question is saying here, what is the lowest common multiple of eight and four? So we're looking for a number that they've both got in common. Well, 16 uh, springs to mind straight away. They've both got multiple, uh, they've both got 16 as one of their multiples, but they've got a lower one here. They both have eight as a common multiple. So I think the lowest common multiple 
a four and eight is equal to eight. Now notice, if you think of it as, as times tables, and you remember to start on the number itself, so start with eight and not with 16, then you don't miss out on that eight, which you could imagine some students might have done. And indeed, if we have a look at the answer, so we think the right answer is C, and you can see here that B is the most popular wrong answer. Four, I wonder where four would come from? Why on earth would students think that four was the lowest common multiple of four and eight? Well, if you read the answers here, four can go into itself and it can go into eight. What are the students doing there? The students are mixing up factors and multiples because of course, four is a factor of four and a factor of eight, but four is not a multiple of eight. You've got to be really careful muddling up factors and multiples. And as I say, I think as multiples as the times tables of that number. Okay, Ooh, we're building up here for the worst answered question out of those three, and it is this one here. Now, oh, this is a tricky one. It's a wordy one. Wordy ones always take a bit of understanding, a bit of deciphering. It's got fractions chucked into the mix as well. So Simon spends two fifths of his wages on bills. He has 700 quid left over. How much money was Simon's wages this month? Now, this question isn't asking us to find the answer. It's saying which of these calculations is a possible first step in solving the problem. So let's write down what we've got. Simon spends two fifths of his wages on bills and he has 600 pounds left. Now, does that mean that two fifths is equal to 600 pounds? Well, no, because this is the money that he has left. So how much, what fraction of his entire wage is that 600 pounds? Well, if he spends two fifths, that 600 pounds is equal to three fifths of his whole wage. Just check you're happy with that. Imagine Simon starts off with a whole wage he spends two fifths of it. So let's just roughly divide this up. There's his two fifths. That's what he spends. He's got left three fifths. And we know that that three fifths is equal to 600 quid. So now we have to go ahead and solve it. We want to find out what was this hole? What was the hole to begin with? That's what the question's asking. What was, uh, what, how much money was Simon's wage this month? Well, if we know what three fifths is, a really smart step, next step will be to find out what one fifth is. Because once we got one fifth, it's then not going to be too much of a jump to get the whole five fifths. So if we know what three fifths is, what do we do to get to one fifth? Well, we divide by three. And once we've got one fifth, what do we do to get the whole? We multiply by five. So we can see that a really smart first step in solving this problem, because we know what three fifths is, is to divide by three to get one fifth. So I think the correct answer to this is A. Dividing that 600 pounds by three will give us one fifth which will then enable us to find out what the whole wage is to begin with. Um, are we right? Well, yes, we are. But look at that. Less than half of students got this right. The most popular wrong answer is B, dividing by five. Now, why do students think you divide by five? Have a read of that one. Uh, so you have to work out what two fifths is. The first step to finding two fifths is dividing by is dividing 600 by five. Now, the student here, what they've done is they've answered a different question. They've answered the question, what's two fifths of 600 pounds? Indeed, if you're answering that question, a really good thing to do would be to divide by five and then multiply your answer by two. But that's not what the question's asking. This question is telling us, in fact, that three fifths is equal to 600 pounds. And our job is to try and find out what that whole is, what five fifths is. And as we spoke about, a smart way of doing that is to first divide by three. Um, how did you get on with those three questions? I thought they were tricky this week, but don't worry about it. We've seen thousands of students who struggle with these. The key thing is we confront them, we discuss them, and hopefully we figure out what's going on. Um, if you want some more questions, if you're a student, head to my website, diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019. You can have a go at 20 of these quizzes. Um, and if you're a teacher and you want to get your students set up on these uh, revision schemes of work or any schemes of work, it's all completely free. Head to ed.co.uk, look for the schemes of work, in this case, the revision schemes of work, and if you need help getting your students on the system so they can answer them, the quizzes get marked for them and so on and so forth, hello at ed.co.uk is the uh, address to send an email to, ideally attaching a spreadsheet of your students' names and the classes you want to put them in. And I'll be back with another Guess the Misconception. Uh, uh, sorry, Beat the Nation. Got the wrong name for my own, uh, own thing. Back with another Beat the Nation soon. You take care and bye for now.